Well, thank you, Annie and Tamara and all of our music people making worship possible this morning and everyone else as well. We continue in the seven signs of John, and this morning we're looking at the sign of walking on the water, and we are in John chapter 6, verses 15 through 24. Perceiving them that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind that was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But Jesus said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said this morning... We're looking at the sign of Jesus walking on the water. Heard about these two boys that were always getting into trouble, and their parents tried everything to get them to behave. And so finally they, after having given up on everything else, decided to take them to the pastor. And they decided what they'd do is to separate them and have them see the pastor one by one. And so as one boy was sitting in the hallway, the other boy went in to see the pastor. And the pastor wasn't quite sure what to do, but he decided to try to make an impression on the one boy sitting in front of him. And so he said in a deep voice, where is God? And the boy just sat there and looked at the pastor and so the pastor tried that again and said in a deep voice, where is God? And once again, the boy didn't know what to do, and the pastor didn't know quite what to do either. And so the pastor said a third time in a deep voice, where is God? And with that, the boy took off with a bolt, run down the hallway, and he ran to his other brother and said, you're never going to believe it. God is missing, and they think we've done it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I wonder in your own life if there have been moments where you started to think, where is God? You started to ask that question, where is God? And this morning, I think that's a question maybe the disciples were thinking in this moment of the boat. And as I said, we we're looking at the seven signs of John. And a sign for John isn't just a miracle. It's a miracle plus a message. And we've been thinking about four questions. I challenge everyone during the course of the week to think, what is this? sign tell us about people? What does the sign tell us about Jesus? What is the sign saying to me? And who else might need to hear the hope that is in this message? And so we look at this story this morning and wonder if the disciples were thinking, where is God in this moment? You know, the first lesson I learned when I look at this story is the storms of life are real. Sometimes we are caught in a storm. There's a true story of this uh, guy by the name of Tony Bullimore, and he was very wealthy, and he was also into racing sailboats. And so he was in this sailboat race uh, going across the Atlantic, the southern part of the Atlantic, and he got caught in a storm, separated from all the other boats. And the storm was so fierce that there were 50-foot waves, which is a you know, huge wave. And it capsized his boat, even though it was a large boat, and the waves were so powerful, it tore the keel off the boat. And so he was stuck in this boat, and the, it had turned over, and he was inside, and so the water was coming up, and he had just the oxygen in the boat, and he was there for four days, wondering, has anyone heard where I am or know anything about him? Well, he prayed. <laughs> he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And a thousand miles away was the closest land, but the Australian Navy and Air Force uh, saw the beacon go off, searched by satellite, and found his location. And four days later, he heard a knock on the keel of the boat, and he said he's never been so relieved and moved in his life. And he said it felt like he was born again. He said, thank God, thank God that I'm alive. I feel like I've been born again. And I don't know if you've been in a, in a storm that has really been fierce in your life, but in this moment, we're told that the disciples 
decided was Jesus was in the mountaintop uh, alone with himself on a retreat in prayer. And so we kind of think of the season of Lent when we think about prayer. And in that moment, as Jesus is uh, praying, the disciples take off on a boat. And we're told they get caught in a rough storm. And so uh, they're battling the stone, and we're told they rode for three or four miles. Remember, there's no boats, I mean, there's no motors for these boats back then. Uh, there's only sails. You can't sail in a storm. You can't, you gotta take the sail down because uh, it'll just be ripped apart. And so they're, they're battling the waves, and they have to row, and three or four miles is a pretty good row anyway, but in a storm, it's, uh, it's exhausting. So they're exhausted, and they're struggling, and they're in the storm. And I wonder in your life, maybe you're in a storm this morning. I think there's a lot of storms as we look around. We're still got some struggles in the pandemic. Uh, many people are caught in the storm of an illness. Some people were caught in the storm of missing a loved one who they've lost, and other people, maybe there's financial storms or there's relationship storms. Uh, there's all kinds of storms in our life, and the Gospels never mute that note. The Gospels are always real. The whole Bible is so real, and in this morning, when you look at that reading, that story, you realize the storms of life are real. And so if you're in a storm, I think that's important to realize the storms of life are real, but I think the second truth is much more important yet, which is Jesus knows our struggles. Jesus knows our struggles. And it's interesting because when the disciples took off, Jesus was up doing quiet time, a retreat on the mountaintop, which is important that all of us, you know, Jesus saw these people that wanted to give him power. Jesus knew that wasn't God's plan, and so he got away alone to pray. And I think, you know, Lent is a time when we think about the need to be alone and to pray and to retreat and to surrender some time to God so that God can lead and direct us. And I think one of the truths that is important there is, in some sense, Jesus maybe was interceding to the Father for the disciples out in the storms of life, even as Jesus right now is interceding for us as we face the storms of life. We're told in Hebrews, a beautiful book, that Jesus intercedes before the Father to us. And so Jesus is praying to you as you struggle in the storm. And uh, those storms and struggles are real. And I think as we look at Tony Bullimore, his, he knew that storms and struggles are real. And whatever storms that we're facing, those, those storms are real. And the struggles are real. And Jesus understands our struggles. And one of the reasons that God came to us, it's our flesh and our humanity was to know that God is there with us, Emmanuel, God with us there in our struggles as well as our joys. And so in this morning, the disciples are rowing as hard as they can. They're facing the wind and waves. The Greek word, by the way, for strong wind is mega. It was a mega wind, okay? So uh, we know what mega is in our world today. And so this is a, is a mega wind, huge storm, huge waves. Waves in the Sea of Galilee can reach uh, 20 feet or higher, which is a huge wave. The boats were about 25 to 30 feet long as they were in and just sailing. And so they're having a very, very difficult time as they, as they rode against the storm. And of course, the boat could have easily been capsized and they could have, have drowned. But Jesus knows our, our struggles. And I think the next truth that I see here is that Jesus comes to us in the storm. Jesus comes to us in the storm. They looked out and they saw Jesus walking on the water. What, a, what an amazing moment. What an amazing scene that had to be as Jesus was walking on the water to them. And it says that they were, they were frightened, as all of us, I think, would be. Now, it's interesting because Jesus comes to the boat, and you notice that this story is different than other stories about Jesus coming to disciples in a storm. We see a number of times in the Gospels the disciples were in a storm. Uh, in one instance, Jesus was asleep in the boat, and Jesus, when the disciples woke him, Jesus woke up and said, peace be still. And the disciples were calm, the storm was calm beautiful moment. Another time the, they were out on the sea, and remember Jesus came to them and invited Peter to take a step of faith out of the boat, and, and Peter did, and then was caught in the waves, and then Jesus got in the boat, and the, and the storm was calm. But you notice something about this story? The storm doesn't get calm here. Nothing about the storm being calm. This is a different moment, and it reminds me of something really important, which is that sometimes when we pray, the answer to prayer isn't quite what we think it ought to be. I mean, we all pray for the storm to be calm, don't we? At many moments in life, the storm does get calm. 
But Jesus doesn't always promise that that prayer is going to be answered in that way. In this moment, the storm was not calm. But here's the most important thing. Jesus came to them in the storm. And many times I think that's the truth of life because sometimes Jesus calms the storm and sometimes Jesus calms his disciples, which is you and me. But one thing's certain in all of that is that Jesus is always with us in the storm. And I know when we are thinking about the storms of life, little Serenity Sloan is uh, going into surgery this morning, even right now, down in uh, Indianapolis, and so we're going to lift her up in prayer. That's a storm that um, parents face. That's a storm they're facing right now. Uh, we think of the folks over in Ukraine. They're in a storm, and we just wish, hey, that storm would just be calm, peace be still. But it hasn't happened yet. We pray that it will. There's storms in our land as well, and I believe I always pray for peace be still. But Jesus doesn't always say that. Sometimes he says those words that Jesus said in this moment right here, which is, it is I, be not afraid. It is I, be not afraid. I am here with you in the storms of life. And sometimes Jesus does calm the storm in an instant. I've been in a hospital room where you felt God's healing presence and you just felt, man, that was powerful and God's peace was there. And there's been other times where the storm was kind of raging, frankly. But I felt, and the people there felt God's peace and God's presence, that Jesus was there with us in that moment. And so that's a truth that I want us to hang on to this morning because it's so, so important because that can be a life-changing truth. I'm part of the Coast Guard up in Michigan City in addition to some of the other volunteer activities that I, I do. And uh, some friends of mine were on call one evening, and it was a raging storm. Michigan, by the way, Lake Michigan, unbelievable storms, over 1,000 feet deep. The, st the waves out there can get well over 20 uh, feet high. And it was, a, it was a raging, blowing storm, and it was at night. And there, a distress call came out, a May Day call, uh, quite a ways into the lake, and this guy was scared out of his mind. <laughs> he was on a nice sailboat, by the way, but, it, you know, it doesn't matter. If you've got a 35, 40-foot sailboat, and you're caught in 20-foot waves, 25-foot waves, I mean, it is just like, it's just a, just a toy out there. And so this guy was just begging for help on the, on the radio call. And so these guys jumped in the Coast Guard boat, and they're able to motor out against the waves with that. But even there was so, the storm was so fierce, it took them three hours on a Coast Guard boat to reach that sailboat. And as they kind of pulled up and then uh, turned the boat around, which is not easy, and then they were right next to this big sailboat, just being tossed in the waves together up and down. And in that moment, you got a couple of choices. Uh, you can go over and get the person, or they can jump overboard, and you got to get them then. You try to get the line to them ahead of time, but it's very difficult because those boats can slam together really easily in a, in a huge storm like that. Uh, or you try to you know, go with them, and uh, if you go with them, you, I mean, and you abandon ship, you got to scuttle that sailboat so it doesn't, if it doesn't go down on its own. And so they radioed over when they were next to him because you could yell across the waves. You can be 20 feet away. You can't hear a thing. And uh, this guy was scared stiff, but uh, they said, hey, you, uh, do you want us to get you and pull you aboard and you can let the sailboat go? And the guy said, you know what? I feel okay now. I'm still scared out of my mind, but you're right beside me. I think if you're there, I can make it in. And so hours it took for them to get in, but side by side, they brought him in just because they were there. And he knew that if something went wrong, they would get him out or do everything they could to. And I think that's a picture of us sometimes. We think, man, we're in the middle of a storm and we're all alone with whatever it is. But then we see Jesus there with us in the water, in the storm, walking on the waves, saying, it is I. Do not be afraid. And that is a life-changing moment. Every time we pray for someone to be healed or someone to live, and our prayers isn't answered the way that we'd like, and the storm seems to rage on. I think John wants us to know, hey, Jesus is there. Jesus is there with us in the storm. And I don't know how Tony 
Bolomar felt as he prayed for four days for help, not knowing that there was any help that could hear him or hear his prayers or hear his call because he was, could not, the radio didn't work and I sent a, hopefully sent a distress beacon off when he went over uh, and the ship was capsized, but he didn't know, but he prayed. But those guys came, and the knock on the keel of the boat was just never so great in that moment to know they were there with him to rescue him in that moment. I don't know what you're going through this morning. Maybe you're just in calm seas right now in your life. I hope so. But all of us will face some storms in life. Be sure of it. And John wants us to know, John who's seen, John has lived longer than any of the disciples, and likely this this gospel was written after the destruction of Jerusalem, after the temple was destroyed. And John knows that our prayers aren't always answered the way that we'd like. But he knows that God has a plan and purpose and that God's peace can be with us if we would just look out in the storm and to see that Christ is present with us there, saying, do not be afraid, it is I. It is I, do not be afraid. Well, there's a final truth that I see in this story that I think is really important as well, and I like that. Uh, as Jesus gets into the boat, what happens? They're where they need to go. That was the miracle. And I think maybe John wants us to know this final truth in this story, in this sign, is that Jesus will get us where we need to go. Jesus will get us where we need to go. It may not be where you and I thought we should be going, but Jesus will get us where we need to go. And so when we're in the storms and we don't think we can make it to the other side, and we don't even know, maybe we've lost direction, when we see Jesus, we can also have confidence that Jesus will see us through. Jesus will get us where we need to go. And I think that is a powerful, powerful truth. I think of the children of Israel as they face the Red Sea on one side and the Egyptian armies behind them. And I think of that moment when Moses held up his rod and prayed to God and God parted the seas with a huge wind. And sometimes God uses the wind to part the seas and they were able to go over on dry land. And then on the other side, God brought those waves crashing down on those who would destroy them. And so God still works those miracles. And I think of the miracle of Joshua standing on the waters of the river in Jordan and looking across in flood season and God commanding Joshua to be not afraid and to take a step of faith. And so when he and the Israelites did that, God parted the waters and got up from one side to the other, ready to face the battles that were ahead of them. You and I, as we're in the storms of life, know that Jesus comes to us, Jesus knows our struggles, and that Jesus will get us where we need to go, wherever that is. This morning, I pray you'll take that sign to heart. I, I love that scripture verse that Annie read, and Paul, remember, Paul is in prison in this moment when he writes this tremendous letter of joy and encouragement that rings down through the ages as well as the people at time. And so Paul writing in prison for people facing persecution, their storms, says this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There to transcend all the storms of life, there knowing that Christ is there with us to guard our hearts and our minds. Later, in John chapter 16, this is what Jesus says as he's talking to disciples before he's going to the cross. He says, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, turmoil, storms, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The storms may rage, but Jesus is present with us, and Jesus will get us to the other side of the sea and through the other side through the storm. We join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for these signs, these stories that John shares with us. Uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So many of us, Lord, this morning do face some storms in life. And if we're not facing them now, we know that we will in the future. Help us to, to treasure these truths, to keep them close to our hearts and minds, and to realize that, that you didn't promise that we'd never face storms in life but you did promise that you would be there with us in the storms, whispering to us, be not afraid, it is I. 
And so, Lord, help us to hear the whisper. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to hear your promise and know that you are present with us. And help us to trust that promise that you will get us wherever we need to go. We pray this in Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen.